is not working. Hello? There's something very wrong. Hey, hey, hey. Oh no. Oh, 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 oh. This is my fifth time recording this video because Maya crashed and I make lots of mistakes because I feel very awkward doing this. Anyway, you want to know how to make a coffee French press like this bad boy over here? Let me show you how it's done. Look how jiggly it is. It's like real coffee right there. Uh, limitations. You can't really tilt it. Sorry. Uh, and whenever you want to reset your animation, you have to reset everything. Okay, let's start. Let's group this geometry. Let's call it Geo Group. Always nice to keep things organized, especially when you work in a big studio. Am I right? Now let's add some joints. I just want to make the bare bones. <laughs> so let's make the big joint. Uh, let's add a lip joint. Oh, let's turn on X-ray. Lip joint. Let's make a pump because if you've ever seen a French press before, the pump like pops separately from the lid. I can't spell. Uh, let's add a joint to the bottom of this coffee liquid over here. And let's call it lid, liquid base joint. Let's duplicate it and put it at the top and call it, you guessed it, liquid top joint. Oh, I'm doing so much better this time around. Fifth time really is the charm. Let's parent these guys. So let's put pop goes to lid, lid goes to root. And these two are also going to go to the root. Let's group this up and call it the scale group because I like being organized. There are four more joints we have to make. So let's just duplicate this one and unparent it real quick. And for this setup, I'm only gonna use four joints for the top of the liquid. Uh, first, I'm gonna put this geometry, except for the coffee liquid in a layer. I'm gonna call it gel, just because I don't wanna keep selecting it by accident gonna put it yeah in a template layer I am going to hold V and snap this joint in place to this vertex duplicate it do the same on the other side do the same in the front I think it was here I think it was there let me let me fix this real quick yeah that's a little better. They snapped it to the wrong vertex. Okay, and let's call this one. And I'm gonna parent all of these to this one. <laughs> okay. Uh, actually, for this joint, I'm gonna make a buffer group. So I'm gonna group this. I'm gonna grab this transform, copy it, put it in the same location in the group, and then I'm going to zero this out. So basically what that did is it moved the transform from the joint to the group so that this joint is clean and I can connect attributes um, to other things without it, be without it going crazy, basically. Let's make a cube. Everything great starts with a cube. Let's bring it up. Let's go to edit, channel control. Let's make it shear attributes visible. Shear, move to keyable. Now with this cube, we want to try to find which shear attributes will move it like this and like this. If that makes sense, which it probably doesn't, but let me show you. So if I move shear x, y, shear x, z, shear y, z, none of them are quite giving me what I want. So I'm going to rotate this cube negative 90 degrees in y. And now it's doing what I want it to do. And we're only going to use shear x, y, and shear x, z for this. We don't really need shear y, z. Let's subdivide this cube. That's always a great thing to do. Let's subdivide it twice. It's even better than only once. Now let's delete the bottom half. And let's make this cube very flat. Scale it up and shape it roughly the same as the top of our liquid. 
that looks good maybe a little bit less okay all right uh i don't like the idea of having rotate y so let's grab this and let's put it in a rotate axis instead and then we can zero this out and it goes back to normal are you ready for what's next because i am one thing i learned is do not freeze transforms on the scale of this because it messes up what we're about to do so i have my note editor open in here and i have this cube which is i'm not gonna call it cube i'm gonna call it shear driver makes more sense than cube it's not a cube anymore uh, we have our shear driver and this control called coffee liquid that i made off camera because i was having trouble with some stuff that i figured out but yes we have both of these i'm going to connect the rotate x of the control to the shear y and it creates this unit conversion node which is kind of inconvenient sometimes i'm going to connect rotate y to shear xc and now when i rotate this it goes crazy that's because of this unit conversion node so all we're gonna do is set it to one yourself turn it to one yes so now when i rotate the control it like stretches out the shear driver geometry uh, whoop. let's put this under the control good let's zero this out back to what it was before Okay, now let's create some locators. Whoop, 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 whoop. Let's snap these locators to these vertex in our shear driver geometry. Like this one, this one. It's going to roughly match the location of the joints too. So let's go over here. Here's gonna be over here. And we're gonna be over there. And the fifth one's gonna go in the middle. Oh, I hate that this is not in order. Let me fix it real quick. I like when things are organized. Now we're gonna match the name of the locator to the name of the joints. Except instead of saying it's a joint, we're gonna say it's a lock for locator. Oh goodness. Okay, we're going to select our shared driver and use locators. Isolate. I said isolate. God, I can't isolate locators. That's so inconvenient. Fine. Let's do this. Select this vertex that I snapped the locator to. Uh, select the vertex, then the locator, and then we're going to do ring tab constraint point on poly and maintain offset on. We're gonna do the same for all of these. Cool. So now this locator should be following the geometry. I'm going to turn my attention to these joints that I made earlier and just like I did for the top joint, I'm going to also make buffer nodes for all of these. So let me do this real quick. Probably gonna cut this part of the video so it's faster. Don't want this to be too long. All right, buff groups have been created. I'm going to clear my node editor now we're going to connect um, the translate C of these locators to the translate C of these joints. Actually, I should do a parent constraint. I'm going to do select the locator first, then the joint constraint, parent option box, maintain offset, uh, turn off translate all for both translate and rotate, and only do translate C. And there you go. And there you go. And there you go. Now when I move the control, the locators move, which in turn moves the joints. Okay, I'm going to hide this. I'm also going to hide these locators. And while I'm working with these, let's make a new group called extra. Extra group. Yeah, let's get all of these and make another group and call it pinch press. Link. <laughs> Organized. And this is going to go under a controls group that I'm going to make as well. Now before we go further, let's do some skinning real quick. 
Okay, it's kind of done. It's far from perfect, but it is Thursday night and I want to watch Golden Girls. Oh boy, what happens if I... Ooh, ooh, ooh. Honestly, the fact that the skinny is imperfect <laughs> even makes it look better in the sense that it makes the liquid more random. So you know what? Work. By the way, I almost forgot we have to constrain the translate C of this main joint to the translate C of the control. So let's do that real quick. Uh, yep. So now, da da da. Beautiful. I love it. Okay, the next part is the part that people do it many different ways. And I wanted to do it with a particle. So I'm doing it my own way, which is, I feel like it's kind of stupid. Um, let's make, let's make a sphere and make it big and add it to a layer and call the layer scene sphere. And let's go to our effects tab and make this a passive collider. Seam sphere. Rigid, nucleus, all that's going to go to the extra group eventually. Uh, but for now, let's keep it as it is. Let's make a particle. And we're going to do that with the end particle tool. And let's add it to our nucleus one solver that already exists. Let's call this particle uh, Sim particle. And we're gonna draw it at the very center. Hello. Why is it so small? Particle render type. Sphere. You want it to be a sphere. And let's do some changes to these attributes. Uh, live forever flag I think that should be fine bounce so let's make like 0.7 friction soft collision I want a soft collide to be off collide to be on nucleus I want to use the ground plane use plane on also let's change how this nucleus works because I think the particle is gonna fly somewhere oh no it's all good now let's put the rigid, the nucleus, in the extra group. Let's also put the sphere, yeah, and the particle in the extra group. Okay, now let's make another locator. Um, basically what I'm trying to do is this particle is going to simulate and we're going to use an aim constraint to constraint this control and the top of the liquid to this particle as you move so that when we're doing interactive playback it looks like it's inertia and it might not make much sense now but it will later trust me so this new locator i'm gonna call it particle location particle lock is good one thing that i had trouble figuring out is that you can't really aim something at a particle because from my understanding, a particle doesn't have a transform node that follows where the particle is visually. Particles, however, do have an attribute called world centroid, which we're going to have to grab from the shadows. Uh, I think it's called cached world centroid. Please. Cached. World centroid, 
Cached World Centroid. There you go. Let's connect the Cached World Centroid to translate. Yeah, so now it follows where the particle is. And we're going to aim constraint this to the locator. Uh, let's put this locator in the extra group and aim constraint. Actually, let me aim constraint uh, to the group above the control. So this one. Constraint, aim, maintain offset, blah, blah, blah. I could probably figure out uh, the tilt stuff if I paid more attention to this, but I'll figure this out later. Okay, let's make some control for the rest of this rig. And I promise I didn't forget about this other locator. I'll, I'll get there eventually. in here that's my sphere and I didn't forget about her let's call this a press matrix and let's put this I want this to always be in the middle of the French press so I'm gonna put this under yeah I'm gonna put this under this control the locator let's make a decompose matrix node real quick and we're gonna take the world matrix zero and set it to input matrix and the output translate will go here and here Except for translate Z, I guess. So now it follows. So when I do interactive playback, it has a better tilt than no tilt, basically. I also wanted to follow, I wanted to stay in the same place. So if I move this over here, I want the sphere to be like here. Uh, but if I connect the output translate Z directly, it's only going to move that way. So at double linear, output translate Z will go into input one. Let me do some thinking. If I do the same value, negative, it should keep it at the same distance. And I connect it. Hell yeah! Genius! So now let's try this out. Oh hell yeah, L look at her! Look at her. And of course you can hide this and you can hide the locator if you don't like the particle. You can turn the opacity of the particle to zero. Uh, opacity. Bye. Uh, but yeah. Oh, yeah, I have to reset where it is. Yes. And you can play around with the bounciness, friction, and all that stuff of the particle, and you could get your different results with the bounciness of the liquid. 
but yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. I apologize that I'm not great at explaining things, but I promise I would get a breakdown of this out there. So here it is. Fernanda out!